prior to the release of Fallout 3, back in July of 2008. A webcomic was produced and published on the Fallout 3's official website. It told the story of one man, one vault, and a crate of puppets. The vault experiments were never designed to rescue the people that lived inside them. They were a vast social experiment designed to study pre-selected segments of the population. Like Vault 69, where women outnumbered men by a thousand to one. Or Vault 43, which consisted of 20 men, 10 women, and one panther. But we aren't here to talk about those vaults. We're here to talk about Vault 77. One man and a crate of puppets. Vault 77 had a grand total of one resident. It's not known exactly what vault Tech's experiment was, but it probably had to do with studying the long-term effects of isolation on the human psyche. One hour later, we could see him start to freak out. Four months later, he begins to break down. Fifteen months later, he finds a box of puppets. Over time, he begins interacting with the puppets, clumsily at first, then in a much more complex fashion, developing social interactions, personalities, and intricate backstories. Until one day, psst, hey, what? You can talk? Why are you talking? I don't know. Why are you talking? You talk to me first. A puppet, previously unnoticed by the man, had begun to speak to him. He's either hallucinating or starting to develop multiple personality disorder. One night the man was awoken to shouts of regicide. The king had been horrifically decapitated. The man immediately questioned the puppet. I need to ask you a question and I need you to be honest with me. Are you sure you want the answer? The puppet replied. What did you do? The man asked. What we did? The puppet replied. No, you're a murderer. And you're an accomplice. I, I wouldn't. I couldn't. I... You did. Oh my God, what do we do? Reverend Hound... We leave. We leave tonight. So they decide to leave and open the vault door. Outside is an enormous rad scorpion crushing cars in its claws. The man has second thoughts. This is a big decision, you know. Maybe we should sleep on it. After sleeping on it, they do in fact manage to leave the vault. The man has a pretty positive attitude about the whole thing. And he rides a giant ant named Mr. Pinch. When we next see him, he's around a fire with a ghoulified vault dweller, comparing war stories of vault living. Personally, the other guy looks like he got the worst of it. He may, in fact, be from Vault 12, but we can't see the number on the back of his jumpsuit. When we next see the intrepid pair, they've been captured by slavers. And the man tries to warn the slavers, you need to listen to me, you don't want to mess with this puppet, he's seriously crazy. He's killed before. The slavers ignore the man, too busy deciding whether to sell them or to eat them. When we get to the next panel, we find out something tragic has happened to Bob the other slaver. Bob's dead. He killed Bob. I got away somehow. Maybe he let me get away. Maybe he followed me. Man, get your shit together. Who killed Bob? The puppet man. Clang, clang, clang. He's here. The final strip shows us the puppet man standing amongst the corpses of the slavers he beat to death. So, Vault 77 didn't turn out so good. You gotta remember, though, the vaults 
were never meant to save anyone. Now in Fallout 3, we're never able to visit Vault 77 to confirm this story. But there is another nugget. If you go to Paradise Falls, in the Slaver's Barracks, on a shelf there is a Vault 77 jumpsuit. It gives plus five to melee weapons and plus five to unarmed skills. And there is also a holotape titled Burn This Goddamn Jumpsuit. Let's listen to it. Like I told you, man, I don't fucking know where it came from, but it freaks the boys out. Some story from a while back about a stranger with no name. Just get rid of the damn thing. Ain't no good gonna come from keeping it around. Besides, if it is his, maybe he'll come back for it. Comprende? 